Hi, my name is Michael Dada G, and we are continuing now with the psychopath. And for day for today, we're going to go into um, one one question everybody thinks is, you know, how how would I see a psychopath? I mean, is this like what they show you on TV? So we're gonna we're gonna choose a very safe bet, and that would be Steve Jobs. Now. Like I said to you, the psychopath is always going to demonstrate their psychopathy. They are going to make it very well known. And and remember, the whole aspect of psychopathy is the gigantic head structure. However, the head structure also has a long stem disconnected from their body. And they don't really want you to know that they are disconnected like this. So they have to emulate humanity. And what better place to start than a computer? So here's some facts that might be of interest. Uh, first, uh, Steve Jobs' early home life were uh, he was um, he was adopted. So his real parents, in a sense, didn't want him. So depending on the age, from when you're born to six months is the bonding stage. Then the mirroring stage, if your mother or parents give you up for ado ado adoption, then you're always going to have some sort of trauma in the formative years. And since this was when he was very young, it could have been the not being wanted. So if you take that problem that happens in the beginning and then finally get to the point where you're getting to the pregenital stage, and even though you did have maybe loving parents in between, it's still going to spill over. You can't cover up the past problem with just going forward. So the mentality, well, you know, I just want to look to the forward, into the future. I'm just going to, that was behind me. It doesn't work like that. It's a legacy. It has to be dealt with. So a few things. When we look at the Apple Corporation, uh, we see Apple. Apple is a fruit okay when Steve drew the apple what he did is um, the fruit is bitten uh, the fruit the fruit uh, the fruit has a bite missing now the apple can be uh, considered apple from the Garden of Eden even though it was not said that it was an apple in the uh, story in the Garden of Eden. It was the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So you can look at it as being the apple being the fruit or actually the fruit. And there was a bite taken out of that fruit. In fact, if you look at some other videos, it actually plays into this a bit with Steve Jobs. So we have an apple. We have, it's a fruit. The logo is actually bitten fruit or bitten apple now things get a little weird steve jobs had a problem with his pancreas and his pancreas was uh, failing he ended up living about four or five more years after he first had the problem with the pancreas but he didn't listen to his doctors his uh, consumption of food was a fruit and nut diet that was his consumption. And then it caused the pancreas problem. Now, his pancreas is in his torso. So his mind was actually still functioning, but his body was failing. So if the head is so far away from the body, the body doesn't even know that there's a head there. It starts dying. So we have a pancreas fruit nut problem. Now you're saying, okay, Michael, you know, I know where you're going with this. You're saying that, you know, he died because of his fruit and nut. Okay, so there was an actor named Ashton Kutcher. And what Ashton Kutcher did, Kutcher, C-U-K-U-T-S-H-E-R, something like that. Everybody knows him. He's married to Mila Kunis now. But when Ashton was playing Steve Jobs in one of his roles, he actually started to eat the same diet. He was eating Steve Jobs' fruit and nut diet. Okay, no big deal. Well, guess what? As he was eating his fruit and nut diet, 
Ashton Kutcher developed a problem with his pancreas. His very own pancreas had the same problem that Steve Jobs was diagnosed and died from. He changed his, uh, he changed his diet and Ashton Kutcher was okay again. Now, do you think this is a coincidence? Really? You don't think this is something tied into it here? That that Steve Jobs, who, you know, you hear, you'll hear me say that I consider him a very big psychopath, big control freak, lots of fear, treats people like they're nothing. The stories are countless. It's a legend uh, from people that work with him how miserable it was working for him. He treated you like a machine because he has no regard for your body. He doesn't understand that. Remember, emotions, body, sympathy, all that stuff is in the torso. The head does not consider you're an entity. From his own sword, from his own thoughts, my thing is he killed himself by accident because of his own arrogance. And that's what God gives you. God gives you what you want. He lets you control. You want to control? You want to be controlling? You'll control your own death. God will give it to you. So now, let's put that aside and let's look at the Apple iPod again. Or the iPod products. If you look at all the products, iPod, uh, iPad, iPhone. If you ever look at the way Steve Jobs presented his products, he would always hold his products in front of him. Go back, look at a few videos, and look at the pictures it's as if he's a, a proud child showing his mommy what he created and in this case he's trying to show off what he made but there are no eyes now there's no one that can connect with him to fix this problem but he's holding his ipad in his hand he's holding his iphone in his hand okay so what does steve jobs think of everybody else in the world well, if we look at the iPod, iPhone, iPad, and iWhatever that Steve Jobs makes, it's very easy to see that the I part of this is the user or customer. And what is the pad or the pod or the phone? That is Steve's creation. So if you look at everything that Steve Jobs put an eye in front of. He made the user or customer diminutive, but he made his manufactured machine capital. You see that? You don't see that? You don't see that he wants to be above all his users? You don't see that relationship when he makes the iPod or iPad? Or I Mac, the I is diminutive. Look, yeah. All right, we got one more for you. At this time, we're going to discuss a video that was done in 2010, which is going to be in my comment section below. And and this video is the iPad video. And my suggestion is to stop this. Uh, video right here go watch that it's uh, eight minutes long but really only seven minutes and 50 uh, seven minutes and 49 seconds to be exact of verbal uh, time and really look at everybody that you see there look at whoever's speaking when they're speaking speaking and what they're saying observe their body observe everything and then we're going to run over the time, and then I'm going to tell you about each and every one of those people. So I'm going to just sit here for a second, pause, give you opportunity to shut the video, wait, and come back. Okay. Did you watch the video? Great. Let's start off. The video is eight minutes. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over who spoke and what they mean to uh, the Apple Corporation. For the first 25 seconds, from the start of the video for 25 seconds, John Ivey spoke. Who's John Ivey? John Ivey is the Senior Vice President of Design. 
okay? Then after that, from 25 seconds to 57 seconds, Phil Schiller spoke. Phil Schiller is a senior vice president worldwide product marketing. From 57 seconds to 1 minute and 17 seconds, John Ivey again. From 1 minute and 17 seconds to 5 minutes and 3 seconds, Scott Forstel. And who's Scott Forstel? He's the senior vice president of software on the iPhone and also other products as well. Back then. He's no longer with Apple now. And we're going to find out why. Then from 5 minutes and 4 seconds to 6 minutes and 52 seconds, we have Bob Mansfield. Now what did Bob Mansfield do? He's the senior vice president of hardware. 6 minutes and 54 seconds to 7 minutes and 27 seconds, we have Phil Schiller, once again, remember, Senior Vice President of Worldwide Product Marketing. And then the conclusion of the video is 7 minutes and 27 seconds to 7 minutes and 49 seconds, John Ivey, Senior VP Design. Now, you, you know the times that they spoke, you saw the video, and now we're going to look at this chart. Who would think that these four people involved are perfect representations of some of the character defenses here? We don't have everybody, but we have someone that's, that has a character defense in the bonding stage, in the anal stage, in the pregenital stage, and the genital stage. And we're going to go over certain body characteristics and certain things about them. First, let's start with John Ivey. If you look at his name, he's the only person here that has a biblical name, John. There's no other biblical name here. He's the first one to speak. His name also is I-V-E, and also he's the last one to speak. So it begins and ends with I-V-E, John Ivey. Now, he is senior VP design. And if you listen to him carefully, you're going you're gonna to think that this guy's on a cloud somewhere. Really, a cloud. You're going to think he's going to take you to a waltz on a cloud. And you know why? Because he hasn't fully come down when he was born. Maybe his mother didn't want him. And his way of dealing with that as a baby, not conscious now, between zero and six months, is to disappear. These people are thoroughly discussed in my stages of development video. And the creative people... The, 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 the artists, the singers, who are pretty much dysfunctional in many ways, but they have this brilliance about them that gives them this beauty. Now, John Ivey was an absolutely non-existent person until Steve Jobs died. After Steve Jobs died, he came to shine as a rock star for some reason. And you know why? Because... Steve did not want to let John Ivey outshine him. So he had to hide him. And that's a fact. That is a total fact. If, if anyone remembers the videos, if anybody remembers press coverage, you never heard of John Ivey until after Steve Jobs died. Okay. So now the next person, not in order of the video, but in order of which character defense they have, is the anal phase between a year and a half and three. And who's this guy? His name is Bob Mansfield. If you look at his name, the word man is in there. Bob looks like a tank. He has no neck. Did you notice that in the video? He looks like a tank. Whether the first guy is um, John Ivey, he looks like a butterfly. He sounds like a butterfly. When you look at Bob Mansfield, he's the guy with the big sausage fingers. He's the guy that can crush coconuts. And he is, what does he do? He does hardware. He is extra large reality. He is in charge of hardware. Now, what's really interesting is the next guy. The next guy and the star of our show is Scott Forstel. He spoke from 1 minute and 17 seconds to 5 minutes and 3 seconds. He had probably the most of any two you can combine. He spoke the most. And if you really look at him, you're going to see one eye going in one direction and the other guy going in the other direction. You're going to say to me, you know, why am I picking on his look? If you look at him, 
he also looks creepy. And you know why? Because he represents the full tilt psychopath. Another thing in my stages of development I talk about is that the psychopath, which I didn't say in the previous two or three videos, is that they have maybe oversized eyeballs. And they do. And they have an intimidation look. Some can be very seductive and some can be very intimidating. If you look at Scott Forrestal, he has an intimidating, I'm going to hack you up with an axe look. Go back and look at the video if you think that I'm exaggerating. And he had the largest block of time. Why? Because he's the inflated ego. And one more thing about him. What was he in charge of? He was head of software. So can you imagine the software guy is going to drive the hardware guy crazy? Can you see that? Can you see that Scott Forrestal probably punished poor Bob Mansfield on a regular basis? You got to think about that. You can't miss it. It's so obvious. Once you understand the body and the energy and how it works, it's very easy to see. And he deals with software. It's not concrete, the software. It's... It's, it's something that is not uh, tangible. It does things that we need for the computer, but it's not tangible software. It really isn't. It's a, the non-tangible part of the computer, which is exactly what he does. No substance. No substance. Now our last person that we're going to talk about is Phil Schiller. Now who's he? Phil Schiller is what we would call the genital stage trauma of rigidity he is rigidity now these guys are mr perfect these guys on the outside they look good they sound good they're eloquent they can talk well um you know they're 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 achievers in life they're organized anything that a perfect person is going to have it's going to be this guy phil schiller and what does he do he's senior vice president of worldwide product marketing he represents the communication aspect of the character defenses. We have four of the five character defenses laid out in front of us in one not even eight minute video. Other things that Phil Schiller does, you notice his eyes are kind of beady compared to like, let's say, the pregenital stage of Scott Forstall's eyes who kind of look oversized. These guys usually have beady eyes. Another thing about these guys, if you're, if you're dealing with someone in the rigidity, and, you know, I'll tell you something funny about them. They're literally blind, these people. And here's how they're blind. If you have someone that is very neat, compulsive, neurotic, and I imagine Phil Schiller's like that. If I was to talk to him, he'd probably admit it to me. These people count every step. They know where everything is all the time. It's super organized. So if you're not sure if somebody's like that, you know how you drive them crazy? You take everything in their house and you slightly move it a 64th of an inch. Just unnoticeable you move it. And you know what? That guy's going to notice it. Phil Schiller counts every step he walks to work. If he's got to walk to work and you ask him how many steps is from your car to your office, he will tell you some crazy number because that guy knows those numbers because that's what the character defense is. It's not the person. So these things that I'm talking about, these people, this is not really all of them. This is their defense mechanisms. So the defense mechanism of this guy is not to feel the body. The defense mechanism of Scott Forrestal, and you might think that he is, you might still think that Scott Forrestal is not the psychopath that we're talking about. I tell you what, he was in charge of the software for Google, uh, the transition from Google Maps to uh, the Apple Maps. And you know what? It was a big failure. It was such a failure that apology letters were written for uh, to to apologize to the consumers about that and you know what scott forrestal did he did not apologize and they fired him for it he will not apologize that is the protege of steve jobs he was known as the protege of steve's jobs and he would not apologize and they fired him because it was a software issue and he, and again he must have been a monster to work for and if you don't believe me go google it you'll find it or go 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 search the internet but um 
this again, this conclusion of this video, and um, and uh, we'll put another video out. And may God bless you.